Well hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. Today we will be playing through Pokemon Omega Ruby without gaining any experience. So none of my Pokemon will be able to level up except for the rare candies that I can find throughout the world. Those are allowed. This challenge was streamed on Twitch so this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of video. Because there is going to be a bunch of stream highlights. But I lost all of my stream footage for the first two gyms so those will just be regular footage like a normal video. After that, you'll be seeing me on screen. Since this is something I've never done before, definitely let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these kind of videos. And of course, if you want to be in the video yourself, you can always stop by on Twitch. So let's get into the rules. I am allowed to use any Pokemon that I want. But they can of course never level up or gain experience. I'm allowed to use TMs as much as I want as well because they are reusable in this game. I won't be able to use any items in battle, and those are the major rules. Before we get into the video, don't forget to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button if you have not done that already. And let's get right into Pokemon Omega Ruby without gaining any experience. We start our game by naming our character Zwiggo, and we jump out of the moving van, surprisingly, without any injuries. We then go to the neighbors, and we meet their kid, May, and she is going to be our rival. Or at least that's what she thinks she is because... Or at least that's what she thinks she's going to be because May is always a pushover in any challenge you do. We then of course pick our favorite and best boy Mudkip. And after defeating the Puchena you can see that we only gain 1 EXP per battle because you can't set it to 0 on Omega Ruby because then your game will crash. But don't worry we're not going to be leveling up a single time except for, of course, the rare candies that we find. We name our Mudkip Beep and go to the first rival battle with May and destroy the Trico easily with some tackles. As we try to make our way to our dad, we can see some butterflies flying around. But we ain't no simps, so we move on. We help Wally capture his first Pokemon Ralts and then we go into the woods to capture a bunch of Shroomish. Four Shroomish to be exact. We then go to the route past Rustboro City to also capture a level 7 Zigzagoon. And with these Pokemon I decided to head over to Roxanne, the first gym leader, which is of course rock type. That's why I got all of these Shroomish. Her first Geodude is able to take down my Shroomish and my Mutkip before I have to send in another one after she uses a potion and then I take it out with a couple more Absorb. When the Geodude finally goes down, she goes into Nose Pass and I switch in another Shroomish to Stun Spore it and paralyze it. I'm then able to hit a couple of Absorbs before my Shroomish goes down, then I switch in my Zigzagoon to growl the Nose Pass a bunch and lower its attack. This way my Shroomish will be able to survive more hits. Then 2000 years later. And we finally defeat the Nose Pass and we gain our first Gym Badge. With Pokemon that are very, very underleveled. Now we have to take on the Team Magma Grunt down at the cave, but before I do that, I get myself a Skitty because it does have access to Sing. But even with this Skitty on the team, I still wasn't able to beat this level 13 Puchena. I tried to paralyze it so that all my Pokemon could go first, but it has the ability Tangled Feet, so I'm basically always going last here. After getting my ass whooped a couple more times, I decided to get an Enkeda on the team, and after we got him, this battle became pretty easy. So we go to the Devon Corporation to talk with Steven's dad, then move on to Mr. Briny's house and go on a sailing trip with Pico. We then go to Granite Cave to capture ourselves a few Makuhitas, which we of course all appropriately name Thick. I was also able to find a level 12 Geodude, which is a very low encounter in this cave, and he's also just going to be amazing against Watson. So I grabbed me one of those. After souping up the team, we go ahead and face Brawly. Brawly's first Pokemon is a Machop, so I start off with Makuhita and go for the Fake Out, then go for the Sand Attack, and then I get destroyed by a Critical Hit Karate Chop. I then go into my second Makuhita, go for another Fake Out, and get destroyed again. So I go into another Makuhita, and with this one, I decide to set up a bunch of Sand Attacks before going down. Then I go into Zigzagoon, lure down its accuracy to the max, with of course even more sand attacks and then I start tail whipping away to lower its defense as well. After the defense is lowered enough, I tackle it a couple times until he faints. 
He then goes into his own Makuhita, which is also his last Pokemon. So I decide to go into Skitty and put it to sleep with a bunch of Sings because my Skitty didn't want to hit a couple. I then go for one Tail Whip, switch into Zigzagoon and start sand attacking again, but this time it didn't work out that well because Zigzagoon went down pretty quickly. I go back into Skitty, put it to sleep again, use some Tail Whips, Skitty goes down, I go into Geodude and finish off this Makuhita with a bunch of magnitudes. We then travel to Slateport City to pick up this Pikachu because it's level 20 and it's going to be just super useful. I then change it into the Luchador outfit so it gets to move Flying Press. But before we take on May, I capture a Gulpin and a Voltorb. And with these new team members, I decide to go ahead and take on May. But her team was no problem at all. Her first Pokemon Slugma went down to some Electro Balls from Pikachu, Wilmer as well, and then of course last up is Grovile. So I decide to go into Zubat and then confuse the Grovile and proceed to do some chip damage with Bite until we go down. Then I switch in Gulpin and I finish off the Grovile with some Sludges. And that is the hardest May battle out of the way. Before we take on Watson, we also defeat Wally in a battle. And then we take on the big, the old, the man, Watson. Watson leads off with a Magnemite, but this thing does have Sturdy, but I still decide to lead off with Geodude because it can only hit me with Tackle. Then after three Magnitudes, the Magnemite goes down because he of course had to use a potion. He then sends out Magneton, so I switch in Zubad and try to fake it into using an electric type move, so I switch into my Pikachu because it has the Lightning Rod ability. Sadly enough, it did go for Magnet Bomb, so I just kept on using Electro Balls until I got it down into red health and then my Pikachu went down. I didn't use Flying Press because Flying Press would be not very effective on this Magneton because of its electric typing. Don't ask me why, that's just the way that Flying Press works. I then go into Voltorb to try and take it down with some sparks, but I get confused and my Voltorb takes itself out. So I switch in Makuhita, go for the fake out, and now the Magneton is finally down and out. His last Pokemon is Voltorb, and I go for two more Magnitudes in order to take it down, and with my third Gym Badge. From this moment on, I found the footage from the stream highlights again, so we're going to be seeing two Zwigos here. So while I was making my way up to Meteor Falls, some shenanigans happened. We of course had to make our own secret base. What's what should we call our house? Dwayne's backyard. <laughs> yo, yo, that's actually kind of fire. <laughs> Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne's backyard. <laughs> Chad also asked me how much money I actually make from YouTube, and here is the answer. My total income is basically just my YouTube channel. Um, and the total income in like a month is like the same as a pack of a pack of noodles. Like, you know those hard noodles you buy at the Chinese shop? Yeah, those. You can buy one pack of those a month. I also found out that grandmas apparently watch me. That grandma had a monitor where she was watching you? What? <laughs> Whose grandma was watching me? Tell me. I need to know. And I showed everyone the superior dog breed. It's my dog. It's a husky. You know, wanna know why? Because huskies are the best dogs. They are. They really are. There was some storytelling about my past pets, and I don't think PETA would have liked to hear this. We went to like, my mother's friends, and they had a fish, one fish, and they were like, ah, oh, we don't need this fish, <laughs> like randomly, and they just gave it to us. So then we just had this random fish, but we just put it in a bowl, so it didn't get, I think it didn't get enough oxygen or something. <laughs> and literally like, one week later, Mr. Fish was dead. I also had a like a tiny little turtle, like a tiny tiny little water turtle, and I I wanted a pet so badly. I think I was like six or seven years old at the time, and we finally I got myself a water turtle. I think we had it for a week or so, and I had to clean out like its um its habitat where it was living in. And so I I took the turtle, I took it out of the out of the thing. What it was, where it was, where it was living in. So I took it out, and it was so slippery that I dropped it. I dropped my turtle, and then the turtle didn't eat for a whole week, and then it died. Turtwig did a hunger strike. 
I didn't mean to kill it. It was just so slippery and it slipped out of my hands and it dropped on the floor and it... Oh my god, I feel so bad. I was so sad after that. But after all of that shenanigans, we did eventually reach Meteor Falls, beat up Tabitha, and captured a Zangus with a... I wasn't paying... Quick Claw. Quick Claw! Poggers! Yo, I'm gonna call my friend Putin. I'm gonna make him give me a bear. I honestly don't know what's happening anymore. And then it was time for our first actual roadblock of the challenge, Maxi. And the reason why is because of his camera. I just don't do enough damage with my Zangis. Of course, my Pikachu is not going to be doing any damage against it either. So what had to happen was he starts off with my Iena, right? I would have to switch in one of my Zangus, set up a home class, and he would have to go for Swagger. Then my Zangus can't hit himself in its confusion a single time, and then I might be able to win if I hit enough slashes. But of course, after about 5-6 to six attempts, which takes a long time in Omega Ruby, this didn't really happen in my favor, so chat had an idea. They made me pick up Persim Berries which heal confusion, so I gave these to the Pokemon that needed them the most, and I jumped back into the battle. I decided to lead off with Mawile to get the Intimidate, and my Mawile doesn't really care about the Mightyena's Intimidate. After he goes down, I switch in one of my Zangooses, I set up a Home Claws, and the Mightyena goes for a Snarl. Then he goes for a swagger after I hit a slash, so my Zangus eats it Persim Berry and proceeds to kill the Mayena with another slash. Camera up then came in, so I went for the slash and it didn't kill the camera up and the camera up took down my Zangus. So I went to the Geodude and my Geodude's quick claw activated twice, killing the camera up with two magnitudes. That really was clutch. Last up was Golbat, so Geodude is of course going to go down here. And with Pikachu's Volt Switches and my Zangus' Slashes, I was able to defeat Maxi. And I was about to end the stream when I reached the next town and I wiped on a Gloom. Thank you, Random Gloom. Very cool. So I went back there, ended the stream, and the following day, I started off the stream with a pretty weird question. Bath? Or shower? D like, which one do you prefer? Bath or shower? Because I love the bath, dude. Yeah. I would like to know what you think in the comments down below too, because Twitch chat said shower. I hope you guys will agree with me. I established that I'm basically Italian as well. It's an Italian name. I mean, my Italian is top notch, so... <laughs> And I also decided to capture some mat chops for the next two gyms and decided to get the team going. And then it was time to take on Flannery. This fight went pretty easy, she started off with a Slugma, so I led off with Zangus and switched into Numal to bait out the Overheat. After that I went for a Magnitude and I one-shot the Slugma. She then decided to go into her own Numal, so I switched in Zangus and took that thing down with two Slashes. And last up was Torkoal, and with the power of my matchups, as Seismic Tosses and my Pikachu's Volt Switch, I was able to take this thing down too and win my fourth Gym Badge. We also learned that Game Freak are pretty romantic people. It's gonna attract. What's that? Was that jazz music? Does he play jazz music when it... When to use a tract? Damn. And I confessed my love for slacking. Slacking is thick, yo. Slacking is kinda dreamy though. And without thinking, I decided to challenge my dad. This did not go well because I could only kill one of his slackings before I got absolutely wiped. It doesn't matter, we're dead. We're dead. I'm dead. I've only managed to defeat one slacking. So chat told me that Dig would probably be the best strategy here to take down Norman because of the slacking Struent. So I went to the desert and found my old Pokemon Crax collection. Yeah, I bet that almost none of y'all know what this is. Well, good for you because I have the entire collection and I also have no idea what to do with these things. But they were pretty cool so I thought I'd show them off in the video as well. Yo, yo, does any of y'all remember this Pokemon, Pokemon Cracks? It's like this, this, like flipple kind of things? I don't know what that is. I don't know what they're called, but we used to have them here. I have the entire collection. 
Look. Boom. I got them all. Insane, right? What's that? Yeah, it's it's from the from the old days, dude. Pokemon cracks. Man. And this isn't the only weird thing I have. I also had Pokemon Whoops. Do you have any other cool slash rare Pokemon stuff? Uh, you have these other things. They're still at my old house. It's called Pokemon Whoops. So we a p s, uh, and it's it's like basically the same thing as this I think, but then they're squares and not triangles. I then captured a couple of Sandshrews, made some more jokes about Pokemon cracks. <laughs> he protect, he attack, and most importantly, he Pokemon crack. <laughs> and changed my Pikachu's costume to the fighting type one to get Flying Press back. I straight up asked this guy to give me Dig, but this is not even the Dig guy. Yo man, give me some Dig. And I decided to learn this TM to most of my team members. With my new TM, I went back to my dad and decided to dig up his entire gym. I decided to lead with Pikachu and let it just go down because then the strategy could really start. The slacking went for the retaliate, took me down, and I switched into my first dig user, Cracks the Sandshrew. Since the slacking's true now activates, I am always going to be able to go for dig with this Sandshrew, but I didn't take into account that this slacking has yawn, which hits me even while I'm underground. To this day, I don't know how that works. How can you yawn while a Pokemon is underground? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, after he took down my Sandshrew, I decided to switch in one of my Machops. He did get put to sleep a couple of times as well, but the slacking never attacked him, so my Machop took him down with a lot of digs. Since his Machop was asleep and he was about to send in Vigoroth, I decided to let him go down by Retaliate. I then went into another Machop and was able to get off one low sweep with the Quick Claw, but that's it, and then he also went down to two Retaliates. I went into Sandshrew and was able to hit two more digs while my Sandshrew was left with only one HP and then the Vigoroth finally went down. He then goes into his last Pokemon slacking so I decide to switch in Geodude and let it go down. Then I go into Sandshrew, keep on digging away at this big fat ape and eventually win my fifth gym badge. After getting the badge we blurred out some romantic moments. It was awkward. They had an awkward moment guys. Or no, they're gonna kiss. They're gonna kiss, no. And we went ahead to get one of the best team members that we can get up until Tate and Liza, Latios. After getting Latios, we absolutely destroyed the Weather Institute with Surf. And we, of course, had another rival battle with Mei. So then I mega evolved my Latios and proceeded to destroy Slugma, Grovile, and Whalmer without any problems. As a reward for beating her, we got the HM for flying and proceeded to capture some Absols and Linoons. After getting these new team members, I hightailed it to Winona. She leads off with Swellow and I lead off with one of my Absols, set up a sword stance and then bite it. I was about to go down, but Winona decides to use a Hyper Potion and on my second bite, I got a super high roll taking down the Swallow, so that Hyper Potion really worked out well for me. Next and out was her Altaria, but sadly enough, my Absol couldn't announce speed and I got taken out by Dragon Breath. So I went into Latios, Mega Evolved, and swept Altaria with two Dragon Breaths. Next and out is Skarmory, I go for three serves and that thing is down as well, and my Latios didn't even take that much damage. Her last Pokemon was a Pelipper, so I once again stayed in, went for the Luster Perch twice, and destroyed Winona. This gives us our sixth gym badge, and after getting this badge, the chat had to ask one question. Who's Joe? Hey Hans, who's Joe? Yo, Hans, can you, can you please tell me who Joe is? Because I don't know who Joe is. Joe Mama, oh, he got me, boys, he got me. After this very important question, we travel to Lilico City to fight Mei once again. She led off with her own Swallow, so I led off with my Mega Latios and destroyed it with a Luster Purge and a Surf. But it was able to do about half of my health with two Aerial Aces. Next to out was her Sceptile, so I switched into Absol and I was able to hit two Slashes before going down to some Dual Chops. So I then went into Linoon and he was able to finish off the Sceptile with two more Covets. Or co Covets? How do you pronounce that? Then her big fat Waylord came out, so I decided to go into my Kecleon, but he was not able to do any significant amount of damage, so I went down to two Water Spouts. So Latios had to come in once again and save the day with Luster Purge and Dragon Breaths. 
Her final Pokemon was Mikargo, and that thing is not going to survive a surf, so we defeated Mei again. Chat then made fun of the way that I pronounced Juan, and we came up with some very good ideas for shows. <laughs> Adventure time with Finn and Juan. <laughs> Any character of any show should just be replaced with Juan. You got Rick and Juan too. Rick and Juan. That's a good cartoon. You should watch a Rick and Juan. Attack on Juan. That's that's the one uh, Juan dies in. Attack on Juan. That's the season where he dies. We hiked to the top of Mount Pyre and saw Maxi actually picking the right orb for once. I know, that doesn't happen a lot. I then went to the Team Magma Hideout to pick up myself a level 40 electrode which is going to be pretty useful. My stream then disconnected because of my garbage internet so I called the man that you need when that happens. We want Dwayne back, where is Dwayne the Rock Johnson when you need him? Please Dwayne the Rock Johnson, fix my internet, that's all I'm asking. And then I proceeded to sweep the floor with the entire hideout, including Courtney, the admin, as Maxi left with his submarine. Chat then asked a very important question. What if no <laughs> what if no spaz broke his nose? I don't think I think if no spaz broke his nose, he would probably die. Since the next gym is Tate and Liza, I captured myself some Pelippers. Someone in chat asked if there was a Pokemon Cracks ROM hack, and sadly enough there isn't, but if you're a Pokemon ROM hacker, I would 100% play a Pokemon Cracks ROM hack. And we then decided to move on to Moss Deep City to take on the twins. On my first attempt, I got very unlucky, as you can see right here. Don't do that. Ah, you have two hyper potions. That's kind of cheap, though. That's kind of cheap. That's kind of cheap. Don't go for an hypnosis. Don't. Psychic. This should not kill. Of course they get the crit. Of course they get the crit. Of course. That's some BS, dude. So after losing, I changed around the movesets a little bit. And the winning run came soon after. So on the first turn, they decided to take out my Absol with a rock slide. And they also set up a light screen, which means that my surf is barely going to do anything. But my Pelipper was still able to get one off. I then went into Electrode and set up my own light screen. Their Soul Rock set up a sunny day and their Lunatone hit my Electrode with a Psychic. And my Pelipper was able to hit a critical hit surf on the Lunatone. Electrode hit one more Electro Ball before going down to Rock Slide, and Pelipper hit one more Surf. I then went into Latios, Mega Evolved, and took out Soul Rock with Shadow Ball, and Lunatone proceeded to take down my Pelipper with a Psychic. I then kept on using Shadow Balls and Surfs with my Pelippers and my Latios until Lunatone eventually fainted, and we gained ourselves the seventh Gym Badge. We also solved world hunger if we lived in a Pokemon world, but not in the conventional way. Ditto could technically taste like everything, that is true. Ditto could just change into your favorite dessert and then you could eat it. Just think about that. And we proceeded to go to the Seafloor Cavern to take on Maxi. His first Pokemon is the same as last time, a Might Yena. So I decide to lead off with Pelipper, go for the two Surfs, and that takes it out. Weezing is up next and that thing decides to go boom, so that takes itself out and of course my Pelipper. Next up is Crobat, so I switched in Tentacle to Sack it of course, then go into my Electrode and two Electro Balls took down Crobat. Last but not least was his Mega Camera up, so I switched in my Omega, Latios, Surf and we have defeated Maxi just like that. After that, Groudon goes on a rampage through the entire ocean. I uh, still don't know how that works because he's a uh, ground type. And the worst music in the game starts playing. This song helps me fall asleep. This song gives me nightmares. Chat told me to put this in the video, so here you go. <laughs> Please put a line in the script. That annoying music was on for 10 minutes while me and chat were arguing over Groudon and Kyogre's design. I rode a Groudon through the lava while being schooled on Spanish. Spanish... 
I don't think Correcto is real Spanish though. And Chad almost made me shiny hunt this Groudon, but that luckily enough didn't happen. So I lobbed my Master Ball at it and named it Groudoff. I know, very good name, right? We decided to not use Groudon until it was actually necessary, so I'm going to be taking on the Wallace without him. Chad asked me how much I would rate this game on a scale from 1 to 10. This was my answer. Hashtag too much dialogue, hashtag too much cutscenes. I give this game a... 11 out of 10. After this I switched up the team a bit, so I captured a Mawile, a couple of Lanterns, and a Magikarp which I spent one of my rare candies on in order to get a Gyarados. While going through Wallace's gym, I definitely did not fall through the ice a single time because I'm just that smart. And we immediately jumped into the battle. Wallace starts off with this stupid love disc, so I lead off with Electrode and go for some Electro Balls. This heart-shaped fish is not taking it very well and goes down rather quickly. He then sends out his wish cash so I switch in Gyarados and go for a bunch of earthquakes while getting hit with some Zen headbutts. My Gyarados luckily is stronger and wish cash eventually falls. His ace Pokemon is Milotic and that's what's coming out next. Gyarados hits one more earthquake before going down to two ice beams. So I go into Lantern and I keep Volt switching between my Lanterns and my Electrode until eventually Electrode finally finishes off Milotic with Electro Ball. Celio then gets destroyed by two more balls of electricity and Seeking is last. And I Volt Switch between my Lanterns to kill this thing as well and win my final gym match against Wallace. So we go to our final destination before the Pokemon League and that is Victory Road where I capture a Laron, some Hariyamas and a Medicham. Medicham is going to be very important because I can Mega Evolve it and then it gets pure power which basically makes it a monster. I then proceeded to use three rare candies on my Laron in order to get Aggron, which I can also Mega Evolve in Mega Aggron. And I once again souped up my team's movesets because I got a bunch of good TMs. And then we had another unusual topic. Just imagine a Pokemon knocking the player out and looting them when they lose slash blackout actually. Why do you lose money when a wild Pokemon takes you out? That does indeed not make sense. If something startles you in real life, you're not just gonna be like, Ooh, ooh, I just dropped $2,000, oopsie. That just doesn't happen, does it? And after this, we went through the entirety of Victory Road and battled Wally with the best battle music of this entire game. Wally leads off with Altaria and I lead off with my Aggron, so I go for the Stone Edge and that immediately wrecks it. His next Pokemon was Roselia, so I went into Latios, went for two Psychics, and that took it out. His next Pokemon was Delcaddy, Latios was able to hit two more Psychics before going down to some disarming voices. So I went into Gyarados to finish it off with Waterfall. I showed chat my ultimate form when I become affiliate on Twitch. Then this is me. This is me. This is me when I'm affiliate. That's me and continued the battle against his Magneton with my Medicham, which was one high jump kick later and the Magneton was down and out. His last Pokemon then came out, Mega Gallade, and I switched into Gyarados to get one Intimidate off of course, two Waterfalls which did not take out Gallade, and a close combat finished off my Gyarados. So I went into Hariyama, got hit with a Psycho Cut, but survived and the Seismic Toss won me the battle against Wally. So with that out of the way, we now go into the Elite Four against the first member, Sydney. And he started off the fight pretty weird. I guess I'll give you a get match. That's good, looking real good. Did this guy just hit on me? So we're gonna have to put him in his place. He leads off with his Mayena, so I lead off with my Latios because it doesn't really matter if my Latios gets intimidated. I'm able to get off one Thunderbolt before going down to a Crunch. I then decide to go into Thick and yeah, he, he just didn't want to attack. So I went into my second Thick and he basically did the same. He also hit himself in its confusion a bunch of times. So Mega Medicham had to come out, go for the high jump kick and absolutely destroy my Iena, Absol as well. But sadly enough, Sharpedo outsped me which put an end to my Medicham's rampage. So I went into Gyarados, but even he wasn't able to take down Sharpedo, going down to two crunches as well, but he was able to do chip damage with Earthquake. 
Then I went into Agron and he was finally able to finish off the shark. The last Pokemon was Cacturn and after spamming Stone Edge, my Agron came on top here as well, defeating the first Elite Four member Sydney and moving on to the second one, Phoebe. But her team is really not as easy as Sydney's team because I can't just sweep half of it with my Medicham's high jump kick. Her Dusknoir was basically unkillable, but I did have an attempt where I was able to get past it, but then she still had two Bennets and those were able to finish me off. My team just isn't built to take on Ghost-type Pokémon, and I really need most of these Pokémon for the rest of the Elite Four members. So after a bunch of attempts, me and Chat decided that it was time to take out the big boy Groudon. Because if I couldn't beat Phoebe, I was certainly not beating Steven. So the first Pokemon she leads off with is Dusclops, and I lead off with Mega Medicham, set up two Call Mines. The Dusclops goes for a curse, and this means that my Shadow Ball is going to be able to take it down from this range. Next up is Bennett, so I go for the Shadow Ball, it doesn't quite take it out, she counters with her own Shadow Ball, and this takes out my Medicham. I then switch in the big boy Groudon, she uses a Full Restore, and my Earthquake manages to one-shot. The next Pokemon is Sableye, who is able to survive an Earthquake and hit me with a Fake Out and a Foul Play, doing a very decent amount of damage, but after she uses another Full Restore, a Precipice Blade takes it down. Her next Pokemon is another Bennett, so I go into Aggron, go for two Shadow Claws, and this takes it down. Her strongest Pokemon and last Pokemon, Dusknoir, is then able to take down my Aggron after I hit a Shadow Claw, and my Groudon proceeds to win me this battle with one more Earthquake. Which means that we now move on to Glacia, the Ice-type Elite Four member. Her first Pokémon is Glilly, and I am of course going to lead off with my Mega Medicham going for the High Jump Kick and one-shotting Glilly. Next up is Frostlass, so I decide to go into Aggron, but I miss my Iron Tail and get taken out by a Shadow Ball and a Blizzard, so then I go into Groudon and hit a Stone Edge to take out this Frostlass. Next up is Wall Range, so I go back into Mega Medicham, and this thing also gets destroyed by a single high jump kick. Another Frostlass gets one shot by my Groudon Stone Edge, and last up is Glalie, which I take down with a Stone Edge and then a Lava Plume. This wins us our third battle, so it's time for Drake, the coolest Elite Four member in any game. Drake decides to lead off with Altaria, so I lead off with Medicham and go for the Shadow Ball to get a special defense drop off. Then Medicham goes down, I switch in Gyarados, go for two Blizzards, and take out the Cloud Bird. Next on out is Salamence, so I switch out Gyarados for Thick to try and get a Toxic off, but I get of course one shot by Zen Headbutt. I then go into Gyarados again to get an Intimidate off and switch out immediately into my second Hariyama. He also gets destroyed by a Thunder Fang and a Zen Headbutt. So I decide to go into Mega Aggron, go for two Stone Edges, and this takes out his Salamence. And I still have around half of my HP remaining on Aggron, so this is very good. Then his most annoying Pokémon, Flygon, comes out, so I go into Gyarados to try and get a Blizzard off, but I get one shot by Dragon Claw. Then I go into Mega Aggron again, I hit one Blizzard, but then I get confused by Supersonic and taken out by some Earthquakes. So it is now up to Groudon, Groudon takes out Flygon with Lava Plume, he then sends in Kingdra, but he keeps on going for Surf for some reason, so Groudon can take down this Kingdra with some Earthquakes as well, but he then sends out his second Flygon, which almost took me down, but I got super lucky because my second Lava Plume was a critical hit, and it burnt the Flygon, which was enough to take it down and win my final Elite Four member battle. With them defeated, we can move on to the best champion, Steven Stone. We go big or we go home. If we don't win this one, we go home. We end the stream. Just kidding. We need to we need to complete this. Ooh, this music. Let's just vibe for a second. Vi vibe cat. Let's get it. Let's get it, boys. Versus Steven, Pokemon League champion. Whew. Whew. Okay, I'm ready. But Steven has some very annoying Pokemon on his team. One of them being Skarmory, which loves to set up layers of spikes, which damage my Pokemon every time I switch. 
Besides that, it also has the ability Sturdy, so it's impossible to get one shot and it has the move Toxic. And if it uses this move called Toxic on my Groudon, I have lost. Besides that, he also has a Clay Doll, which is very hard for me to take down because I basically have nothing that even remotely one-shots it and it has the move Light Screen and Reflect which means that my Groudon is just going to do less and less damage and the ability Levitate so I can't use Earthquake on it. So I decided to check my TMs again and I replaced Lava Plume for Overheat which is just a way better fire type move and I think we can deal with a minus two special attack on Groudon. After taking on Kaladol with Overheat this time, he had another big fat Cradley who absolutely managed to destroy my Groudon with Confuse Ray and Giga Drain. But the attempt after this, my Groudon was finally souped up and ready to go. His first Pokemon Skarmory got hit by a Shadow Claw, then he missed a Toxic, hit me with an Aerial Ace and got destroyed by Overheat. The next Pokemon is Agron, so I went into Hariyama, go for the Earthquake, it did a decent amount of damage, and on the second one he predicted me and switched into his Claydol with Levitate. So the opposing Claydol set up a Reflect and I was able to hit one Seismic Toss before going down to Extra Sensory. So then my Gyarados had to come out, hit two Waterfalls and then go down to two Extra Sensories while the Claydol also set up a stupid Light Screen. So then I went into Groudon again, went for the Shadow Claw, got a critical hit and took down this Claydol. He then decided to go back into Agron, but because he's already damaged, my Earthquake can take him down easily. Then Cradley came out, and I kept my Medicham this time. I Mega Evolved, went for the High Jump Kick, and this one-shot this thing from full health. Mega Medicham is so OP. Then it was Armaldo's turn to come out, so I switched into my Agron, and two Iron Tails took that thing down, because it didn't have Water Pulse like in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. And the last Pokemon was Mega Metagross at level 59. So I tried to do chip damage with all of my remaining Pokemon, but none of them could stand up to even one attack from this beast. So Groudon had to come in, and me and Chad decided what move we should go for. And we voted for Overheat. Because of the sunlight, this was able to one-shot Metagross. While my Groudon survived a Meteor Mash. Let's go! Woo! So I, the champion, fall in defeat. You know it, Steven, you just got destroyed. Groudon, or Groudoff. Thaz. Thick too. Thick. Ted and Fuego. We have done it, ladies and gentlemen. We have become the Pokemon Champions. And with that, we have defeated Pokemon Omega Ruby without gaining any experience. Or at least gaining a level because we did gain one EXP every single battle. I also did do the May fight after this, but we sweeped her with Groudon, so I'm not even going to include that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different from normal, but let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this one. If you want to join me on these kind of runs, you can follow me on Twitch. And I, of course, want to thank my Patreon and membership supporters for helping me support the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It's always appreciated. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggle, and I'll see you guys next time.